Praise God. Some wonderful singing this morning. Praise God for His presence on this Sunday morning. I'm thankful we've got a church to come to today. A terrible storm came through on Thursday. Tornadoes all the way from Pineville, all the way through Matthews to Union County. They're still trying to get power back on, trees removed, power lines are down. Thank God He protected our church. We could come here today to worship the Lord. He protected you. You're able to be here today, and we thank God for that. It's been a very unusual time, hasn't it, with fires, the continent on fire, helicopter crashes. Suddenly people are dying That in the prime of life, storms, earthquakes, all kinds of things are happening. The Lord said, when you see these things, start looking up. Lifting up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. I believe we're on the brink of the second coming of Jesus Christ. I believe the dead in Christ are about to rise. We're about to be called away with them in the clouds to meet the Lord, and we're going to be with Him forevermore. Praise God. We've come to worship the Lord today. We have a right to praise Him and worship Him. We had a great uh, prayer conference this week. We didn't get to go Thursday night, of course, because of the storm, but Wednesday night, Friday night were wonderful services, and it's good to be back home. I looked as hard as I could look. I didn't see any of you there. Maybe you were hidden among the people, but I didn't see any of the Matthews folks at the prayer gathering, and uh, I hope maybe you got to watch it online. It's still there if you want to watch it on the uh, Church of God website, Western North Carolina. And they have uh, 
live stream these services so that you can watch them and receive from them. And uh, Brother Toll did a great job ministering the word. And, but it's good to be back home. There's no place like home, is there? Praise God. I want to remind you that our young people will be going to Shabak at Pigeon Forge. That's a week from this coming Friday. So pray for God to protect them and keep them. We're trying our best to uh, get everything ready. We have a bus, and we're trying to get our credentials so that we can have drivers. You have to have a CDL with the passenger provision along with that, so they're working on that. So hopefully that will be done, and they can take the bus to Pigeon Forge. That will be a wonderful blessing. But also coming up in just uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks from this coming Saturday will be our cross-cultural dinner. It was a big success last year. We hope everybody will participate. You know, I might, if you just, if you, if you just, if you just try to give me a little push, I might fix my world famous blue ribbon coconut caramel pies. You just never know. But uh, we have some wonderful cooks at our church. We've got several folks from different nationalities, and they bring all of those cultural dishes, and it is a a sight to behold and a, an aroma to behold. It is wonderful. Uh, to fill our fellowship hall with all these different flavors. So make plans. It's going to be at 1 o'clock on a Saturday. Everybody's welcome to come. We have sign-up sheets, and First Lady will be telling you more about that at the end of the service. This is also Valentine's Celebration Week. We have some gifts to give out at the end of the service, so don't leave so that you can be a part of this special gift giving. Would you stand as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer? We continue to pray for God to move and to touch hearts, pray for those that are sick and suffering, pray for those that are without power, that that can be restored today, and pray that God would continue to bring healing to those that are sick and suffering. Pray for this service, for God to have his way. Father, we thank you today for your wonderful blessings you've given to us, for your protection throughout this week. Lord, you brought us together today that we can worship you and bless you and praise you, and we thank you for that wonderful privilege. We thank you for these precious people who have come together today to worship. We ask you to fill the house with your presence. Let the glory of God fall upon us. Let us be drawn nearer to you. We ask you to bring healing to sick bodies. Bring deliverance to those who are bound and oppressed of the devil. We ask your anointing to be upon every aspect of the service. We'll give you glory and praise for all you do. For it's in the lovely name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Would you take a moment, welcome one another to the Matthews Church of God. We're delighted to have you with us today. Good morning. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful, beautiful 
congregation we have today and that song that the choir was singing just bless my soul looking forward to the service today i would like to know how many came to our cross-culture dinner last year by the showing of hands everybody come on now keep your hands up i want to see all those that came now if you look around you see half three-fourths of the congregation wasn't here oh my goodness okay thank you so we're looking for you to come this year we need your support this is a church event we're not charging this year we're giving donations you can give donations to your choice kids church uh, ladies ministry building fund teens you can give they will have a jar on each table that you can give uh, whenever you come out to eat now we love for you to support our church now you know how it is when your kids have a, a fundraiser going on at school or if they have a fundraiser going on with their sports you're there to support them you're there to help them so that's what we're looking forward to you doing for us here this year is to support because we have so much good food like pastor said it's good good food we had a great great time last year now, those that are participating, you must sign up. Uh, this is very, very necessary for you to sign up. You must have your name on the roll. And then next Sunday, uh, have your menu that you're going to be preparing. And the following Wednesday night uh, at 630, there's going to be a meeting. There's some things that you need to know and that you, we need to go over in this meeting with you for those that are participating. Please get your name on the list. Help us out. This will be Saturday, February 29th at uh, 1 p.m. And we're asking all ladies to help out with dessert, if you would, please, and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you so much. I want to read two verses of scripture. Proverbs 20, verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. Beer is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8 says, But let us who are after day or after daylight be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as, and as a helmet the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, wine and strong drink and beer, that represents things of the world. Things that the world will, world will lead us astray. This foolishness, the Bible says, is not wise. See, the Lord has called us, us in the light, or in the daylight, those who walk in His light, in the light of Jesus Christ, to be sober or to be in our right mind. Right mind especially, you heard Pastor say earlier, we see the things happening around us. We know what's happening if we believe and we read the word, we know that his coming is soon. His coming is extremely soon. Let's be prepared in our hearts, in everything we do, in our giving, in our service to the Lord. Be ready because his coming is soon. I promise you his coming is soon. Let's go to the Lord with, with prayer. Let's go to the Lord on tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Almighty, gracious, heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to be in your house, Lord. Father, we praise you, Lord. It is such a great honor to worship you, Lord, and to give to you. Father, I pray that you would take these monies, Lord, these tithes, these offerings, Lord, and use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. Father, furthermore, I pray that you take each and every willing vessel in this place, Lord, and use us, Lord. Use our mouths, use our hands, Lord. Use us for your glory. We thank you for the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, the only thing that could wash us white as snow. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory in his name. Amen. stand with us. We're going to lift up that name that's above every name. Amen. Lift up the name of Jesus. Shout it everywhere you go. Lift up the name of Jesus. You gotta let the whole world know. He said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Come on and lift him up. Yes, we lift him up. Lift him up. Oh, he said, he said, if I be lifted up, 
I'll draw all men to me. Come on and lift him up. We lift you up, Jesus. Lift him up. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Shout it everywhere. You Come on, go. somebody shout his name. Lift up the name of Jesus. You gotta let the whole world know. He said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift That's him up. That's what we come to do today. Lift him up. Oh, he said, he said If I be lifted up. I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift him up. He's worthy. Lift him up. This is what happens when we lift him up. Death ears will be open. Blinded eyes. Oh, thank you, God. Chains will be broken. And we'll have victory. He said, if I be lifted up. Hallelujah. I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, lift him up. Oh, Jesus, you're worthy. Lift him up. Oh, he said, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift him up. Lift him up. Oh, death ears will be open. Death ears will be open. Oh, blinded eyes will see. Your chains will be broken. And we'll have victory. Up. I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift him up. Jesus, we lift you higher. Lift him up. Lift him up. He said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on and lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Somebody lift up the name of Jesus. Shout his name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, God. Come on, all across this building, let's just lift our praise to him this morning. Father, we worship you. Jesus, we just want to bask in your presence today. Oh, God, we worship you. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who Because of who you 
Is anybody know what a good father he is? Lord, I worship you because of who Do I have a witness today that you're Jehovah Jireh? My bro, he put food on my table. Jehovah needs Oh, when the enemy came in like a flood. Lord, you reign. Hey, Lord, Jehovah Shireh. When I couldn't sleep at night, you're my prince of peace. And hello, Moshe, because of who, not because of what you've done, but Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Somebody ought to give him praise. Hey, when you think about where he's brought you from, you got a right to praise him. Hallelujah. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Jehovah Jireh, hey, you're my provider. Jehovah needs me. Oh Lord, you reign in victory. Oh Jehovah Shalom, you're my prince of peace, and I worship you because of you. a mighty God, victorious God. He hears and answers prayers. We worship you, yes. Mighty God.
on, people of God. Tell him right now, you are worthy. He's listening, yes. And you are worthy to receive blessing and glory and honor. You are worthy for my sacrifice of praise. Oh, you are worthy. The lamb that was slain for you and me. Oh. what he loves to hear he loves for us to worship him to tell him that he is worthy of our highest praise he is worthy of every hallelujah every glory to God every praise the Lord he is worthy what a mighty God praise God thank you singers and musicians thank you so very much Praise God, I feel him here this morning. If you'll remain standing, please, for the reading of the word. I want to read from 1 John chapter 3 and then from Mark chapter 12. 1 John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Mark twelve thirty. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. I want to speak to you this morning on pure love. Would you pray and ask the anointing of God to flow through this place. Father, we thank you for your wonderful presence that we feel here this morning. How blessed we are to be able to feel your touch, to feel your love, to feel the joy of the Lord, the peace of God. Help us, Lord, today to open up our hearts to receive what you have for us. Help us to be pliable, that you can shape us and make us to be what you want us to be. Help us to submit ourselves to you that you might do the work that you desire to do in our lives. Help us, Lord, today to give ourselves to you in totality, holding back nothing, 
yielding every fiber of our being to you. I pray, God, for your anointing. I pray for the liberty to minister your word. I pray today, God, that our hearts would receive the seed of the word. That it would spring to life. Lord, that there would be abundant life in us. We welcome you, Lord, and we ask you to have your way, Holy Spirit of God, moving upon us, and stirring us and challenging us. We give you glory for all these things. For it's in the lovely name of Jesus Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. You may be seated. There's just something about the word pure that we love. Pure is unadulterated. It's unmixed. It's authentic. It's true. It's pristine. It's unstained. It's undefiled. It's uncorrupted. And it's wholesome. That's what pure love is. When something is not pure, it's because it's become contaminated. It's because it's adulterated. It's become tainted. It's become polluted. It's become dirty. It's become infected. It's become poisoned. It's become unclean. Whenever silver or gold was refined, it's refined by fire. And all the impurities would come to the surface. Malachi chapter 3 verse 3 says, And he shall sit as a refiner, and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. The silversmith would take the silver and he would hold it over the middle of the fire where the flames were their hottest so it would liquefy it and burn away all the impurities, all the imperfections that were in the metal, would then that were hidden in the metal, would come to the surface. And the refiner could carefully skim away all those impurities, causing the silver to become pure. He repeated that process over and over again until he was sure that the silver was refined and that it was pure. And the way that he would know that it was pure would be when he could see his reflection in that purified liquid. He knew that it was pure when he saw his reflection. The psalmist said in Psalm 1715, as for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake with thy likeness. We should be like the psalmist who had such a desire. He said he would not be satisfied until he could reflect the image of the refiner in his face. Don't you want people to see Jesus in you? Don't you want people to take notice of you that you had spent time with Jesus? Don't you want people to look at you and say, there's something different about you? I can tell it by the way you talk. I can tell it by the way that you act. I can tell a difference in the, in the glow upon your face. What is different about you? And then you can tell them it's all because you spent time with Jesus Christ. In fact, you spent so much time with him until, until you begin to take on his traits. You begin to look more like him and you begin to talk more like him and your ways and behavior and your attitude become more like Jesus. But isn't that what a Christian is? Is to become Christ-like to where people take notice of us that we have become more like he is. The refiner's fire, it was not a wild fire. It was not an incinerator fire, but it was a fire that burned for a specific purpose. God puts us in that fire. He allows the heat to be turned up so that he might purify us so that he might burn out the trust. But oh, it's for a purpose and it's for a reason. If it were not for the mercy of God, we would be consumed. He says in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy Faithfulness, hallelujah. God has a plan and God has a purpose for each of us today. He wants you to become like Jesus 
Everything we go through is for a purpose so that we can become more like Jesus. It is our goal to be Christ-like, to exhibit this Christ-likeness in the areas of our lives and to teach others how to become more like Christ by example, that we lead the way. We don't act like the world. We don't throw tantrums like the world. We don't speak the language of the world because we are following Jesus Christ. It is our desire to be like Jesus. That's all I ask is to be like him. Let me be like Jesus Christ, to conform to his image, to be more like him every day. So in order to be like Jesus Christ, then he purifies us so that we might be set free. He wants us to be pure so that whatever uh, impurity is in our lives, it will come to the surface and he can skim it away. And you know, the best thing we can do is to surrender unto the great refiner, to surrender unto the refiner's fire. He's going to turn up the heat from time to time and he's going to bring to surface those things that need to be removed. So the smart thing for us to do is to go ahead and let him have his way. The smart thing for us to do is to yield to the fire. But some people suffer for years because they hold on to things that make them impure. They hold on to things that cause them to be tainted. They hold on to things that takes away from what the Lord wants them to be. It's time to stop fighting and it's time to surrender and yield to the refiner's fire so he can burn out the dross in our lives and make us vessels of honor, sanctified and meet for his use. Praise God. Proverbs 30 and 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. A generation that is pure in their own eyes eyes. There was a middle-aged couple that had just moved into a new neighborhood and one morning while they were sitting at breakfast, the, the wife noticed her neighbor out hanging her laundry out on the clothesline. And she said to her husband, she said, that laundry is, is, is not clean at all. In fact, it is still dirty. Someone needs to teach her a thing or two about how to wash her clothes. This went on for several weeks. Every time the neighbor would hang out her laundry, this woman would remark about her dirty laundry until one day the wife saw her neighbor hanging out the clothes and there was something different. There was something different about the clothes on her clothesline. She said, wow. Look, her clothes are clean. Someone must have finally taught her how to properly wash her clothes. Without looking up, her husband said, actually, honey, I got up early this morning and cleaned the windows. <laughs> it's amazing how that we can see everybody else, but we can't see ourselves. In fact, Jesus said, why do you see the speck? that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye. It's amazing how we can see the, the tiniest, the most minute thing in somebody else's life and we can't see the two before or the log that's in our own lives. We can't see our own selves. There's a generation that is pure in their own eyes. They can't see their own uncleanliness. Jesus said the church at Laodicea, he said that they thought they were rich. They thought through their own eyes that they were increased with goods and they had need of nothing. But the truth was they were wretched miserable, poor and blind and naked. They were pure in their own eyes because they were not washed in their washed from their filthiness. Jesus said, you don't have a true estimation of yourselves. You don't see yourself clearly. You need to see yourself as God sees you. You need to be able to see with spiritual sight and insight and know there's impurities that need to be purged out of your life so that you can become more like Christ. Christ. When there's contamination, it ceases to be pure. It becomes tainted, it becomes polluted, it becomes unclean. The food might look good on the table, but if it was created, if it was prepared in a contaminated room or atmosphere, then it's going to make you sick. 
Sometimes you can go to a restaurant and the food may look good that they serve you, but you don't know what's going on in the kitchen. You don't know what's going on back there. You don't know who's handling the food and what they've been up to. And it could be tainted. It could be uh, something uh, it, that would be uh, put into the food that would make you sick if you ever had food poisoning. You don't ever want to have it a second time. It's one of the most, one of the most terrible things to experience, to, to experience food poisoning, but it's uh, the uncleanness. It's when food becomes tainted. It's when there's bacteria that gets into the food that will make you sick. Impurity happens when there's a mixture. When things get mixed together that shouldn't be together, one of my pet peeves, one of the real issues that I see in this last day and hour is we're seeing the secular mixed in with the sacred. When you mix the secular and the sacred, you've got impurity. When you mix pure with impure, it becomes impure. The clean with the unclean, it becomes unclean. And all we're seeing that in the church, when you mix the church with the world, it loses its purity. It loses its power. It loses its anointing. It becomes watered down. It becomes tepid. It becomes nauseating when the church becomes mixed with the world. But that's what we're seeing happening all around us with this progressive, emerging, and hip church movement today. The church is presenting this tech savvy contemporary service, but at what cost? What cost? What, what is happening? Young people are being encouraged to trade in their Christian convictions for a gospel filled with compromise to move away from the old landmarks and the old standards. And they're slowly attempting to give this old time religion an update and a facelift. Trying to do a makeover to this old time religion. I don't know about you, but I love this old time religion. I love the old time way. I know what got me to where I am today. It wasn't some new fangled thing. It wasn't some new cart. But oh, it is the old time way. The old standard. The old way is the way to go. Amen. Besides, they say this is the 21st century. We need to get into modern times. And we keep hearing about churches these days that, that uh, say the old time way is doomed. Because evangelical kids, they're telling us, are leaving the faith and they're not coming back. They're leaving the church and they're not coming back. There's almost a disdain when people talk about traditional church. When they talk about the old time religion and the traditional church, they say it has too many rules. It has too many restrictions. And they're accusing the church, the old time way, of being homophobic. They're accusing us of being bigoted. They're saying to us that we're intolerant, that, that we are uncompassionate because we preach against abortion, because we preach against same-sex marriage. They say we're just old fuddy-duddies and that we need to change our thinking and change our ways. But I would rather have God's approval than the world's applause any day. I'd rather keep preaching the word of God regardless of what the world says. Let me tell you, I don't care what century we're in. This book is still what it's always been. It has not changed. It will not change to accommodate sinful living and ungodly living. There's a judgment coming upon this world because it's rejected the word of God. You hear me today. Churches all around are affected by this growing liberal movement cloaked in Christianity. Our churches rarely have faced the exodus that they're facing today. Where are people going? What's happening to them? So you know what's, what we're thinking in churches? Well, if we're gonna get them back, if we're gonna get people back into the church, we better get rid of those old red back hymnals. We better get rid of the old songs that focus on salvation and God's love. And we need to sing Jesus is your boyfriend songs. We need to sing something that's a little more upbeat so we can jump up and down and so we can say, doesn't this feel good? People want to attend churches that, that leave them feeling good 
about their lifestyle choices. Even though they're sinful, even though they're ungodly, they want somebody to tickle their ears and say, it's okay to live like you live. You just go by your own conscience where you can sear your conscience to where you can't depend on your conscience. You better depend on the word of God. The Bible says we should have a pure conscience. We should have our conscience that is that is touched by the spirit of God. Let him, him that has ears hear what the spirit is saying to the church. They've developed a cafeteria style Christianity. Just go in and pick and choose. I'll take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I don't want all of that. I don't want any of this holiness stuff. I don't want any of this restriction stuff. I just want to live like I please. And they pick and they choose what suits them. They pick and choose what they want to have. You've got to have the whole word of God. Every chapter, every book, every verse, all the promises of God are in this book. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture, every word is God breathed and God inspired. You just can't pick and choose what you want to. You've got to take the whole book, eat the whole counsel of God, eat the meat of God's word. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian, said cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. It's baptism without church discipline. It's communion without confession. It's absolution without personal confession. It's cheap grace. It's grace without discipleship. Grace without the cross. Grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. He said that's that cheap grace that we're hearing today. It's this cheap grace, cheap theology that's being taught in our Bible colleges It's being taught in seminaries. It's being taught in Christian ministries and it's being preached from pulpits all across the land. The old fashioned, the old time religion is being traded in for a bright and shiny, mediocre, impure Christianity. I hear people say, oh, well, oh, isn't that wonderful? This this famous athlete, he got down and he knelt on the field and he prayed a prayer before he played the game. In fact, when they put the camera on him, he said, I want to give glory to God for helping me to play and help me to win this game. And I know there's athletes that are, that are genuine. I know there's some of them that, that are true believers. But it sends a mixed message. When that athlete is living, with his un, living unmarried with his longtime girlfriend, the Bible calls that fornication. The Bible calls it fornication. Jude said that's what Sodom and Gomorrah did. He said that they gave themselves over to fornication and suffered the eternal judgment of God. The Bible tells us that fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't write it. I didn't spell it out. This didn't come from Congress. This came from Almighty God. He said flee fornication. We sang about it in the first song this morning. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We've got to be holy. He's called us to holiness, not to uncleanness. Flee fornication, he says. Run from an ungodly lifestyle. Don't fall into the trap of the world. You cannot live like the world and have a relationship with God. You can kneel down and pray all the prayers you want to pray, but until you cease to do evil, you'll not learn to do well. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach it anyhow. I don't like that preacher. Well, that's okay. That means I'm preaching the word. Amen. Amen. I'm not serving coconut pie today. I'm not serving pablum today. I'm just preaching the word of God. Repent and come to Jesus Christ. Cease your sinning and get right with God. Doesn't matter how modern, doesn't matter how contemporary people think they are. The word of God never changes. I don't care what labels on the church, what name is on the sign, the word of God doesn't change. You say, well, we don't believe in that old stuff here. Well, you, you don't believe the word of God then. This book is forever settled in heaven. He said, don't you change not one, not one dot, not one crossing of the T. Don't you change one, one thing because his word is forever settled. People say, well, I just want a little religion. Just a little religion. A little religion is not going to get you to heaven. You know, 
We quote the scripture. Most of you can quote the scripture, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. You know who Jesus told that to? He told it to one of the most religious people of that day. He told it to Nicodemus. He said, except a man be born again, he'll not enter the kingdom of God. He was a religious. You can be religious and still be lost. People just want a little religion. Oh, if I could just get a little taste, a little touch, a little tuck, just half-hearted, just halfway. No, that's not pure love. Can you imagine this coming Friday's Valentine's? Can you imagine telling your spouse, I love you with half my heart. I love you with a piece of my heart. Oh boy, you talk about trouble. You talk about being in trouble. It's not gonna be a happy Valentine's Day because they know that if you don't love them with all your heart, that you don't love them fully and you don't love them completely. If your spouse won't stand for that, God will not stand for that. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when you have goosebumps. Not just when you feel good. But love him with all your heart. With all your soul. That's your being. We have an eternal soul that is ageless. Love him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And with all your strength, you talk about love, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, loving him with all that's within you. He said, this is the first commandment. Don't move on to anything else. Don't go on to any other theology until you pass this test. You can't do anything else. Nothing else is going to work. Nothing else is going to fit. Nothing else is going to be good for you until you first love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You say, well, I'll try to do better. I'll try to do right. I've seen so many marriages destroyed because you've got a husband that beats his wife and he comes home a day or two later. Oh, honey, I'm sorry, I'll do better. Two or three days later, he beats her again. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna really, I really love you. Oh, he doesn't love her. He loves himself. He only cares about himself. When you love God, you love him Monday through Sunday, not just on Sunday, every day, everywhere you go. Let me do what's right. Let me please the Lord. Let this be pleasing in his sight. But you know what's happened to us? We have been affected by society. It's affecting the church. Society is into one night stands. Society is into casual sex. Society is into lust instead of love, into selfishness instead of selflessness. It was reported this week, I'm sure you saw it, shocked and surprised us. A man in Canada burned a million dollars in cash so that his ex-wife wouldn't get it in a divorce settlement. You talk about ignorant. You talk about somebody that's lost their marble, somebody that's crazy. It's a sick world. It's getting uglier every day. It's pure love that loves for better or worse. Sickness, health. Richer, poor. Until, not divorce court, but until death do us part. You see, that's when you know you really love. You know, these one night stands, casual sex, just occasional get togethers, occasional hookup, that's not love, that's lust. And the more you feed lust, the hungrier it gets. You cannot satisfy lust, but love will keep you loving when the storms come, when the valleys come, when trouble comes, when sickness comes, when there's no money in the bank, when there's no gas in the car, when the children are sick. You don't know what to do, but you still love each other. And you say, we're going to get through this. We're hurting. We're going through a tough time, but love is going to keep us. Love is going to help us to get through. 1 Corinthians 13 describes this pure love. It says love is patient and it's kind. It's not jealous. It's not boastful. It's not proud. It's not rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not easily angered. It does not keep records of wrongs. It does not delight in evil. It rejoices with the truth. It never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful. It endures through every circumstance. And I'll talk more about that tonight. 
But I, the old song says it well. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of viciousness. There's a lot of spite that's going on. But all we need pure love. The love that comes from God. Love that comes down from the Father above. There's no one that sets an example like he does. Oh, that he loved us while we were yet sinners. When we were scandalous. When we were sinful. When we were so, so wretched when we were so miserable. Oh, he loved us and gave his life on a cross for us. The apostle Paul said we are living in a messed up, messed up civilization. A civilization that's totally insensitive to God's holiness and God's grace and has given itself over into a downward spiral of perversion. It's going down the tubes. The very opposite of pure love. Billy Graham asked a university professor what he considered to be the greatest need in our country. And the professor replied, I may surprise you since I'm not a religious person. But I believe the greatest need we have in this hour in America is a spiritual awakening. Which will restore individual and collective morals and integrity throughout the nation. Now when you got a secular person, somebody in secular society that acknowledges that we need a spiritual awakening. Somebody that acknowledges that we need to return to morals, morality, and integrity, we know we're in serious trouble. When somebody who says, I'm not a religious person, but I can tell things aren't like they used to be. I can tell people have, have gravitated away from the light to the darkness. We have a generation today that is arrogant, that closes its mind to the belief of God and sinks deeper and deeper into depravity. It's getting worse everywhere you turn. You can't even watch a commercial anymore without seeing perversion. You see it everywhere. They want to flaunt it everywhere they go. They flaunt it in the face of God. Let me tell you the Lord. Lord said when we would see these days come such as they are now with Sodom and Gomorrah he said you need to start looking up you need to start planning to leave this world because things are wrapping up he's coming and he's coming soon they reject divine revelation they ignore the conscience they refuse to listen to reason and America is fastly and rapidly approaching the dreadful point of moral insanity Vance Havner, such a great preacher who's gone on to his reward, put it this way. He said, at the rate America is decaying morally, we shall have to change our national symbol from an eagle to a vulture. No longer an eagle, but a vulture. There's no quick fix. Jesus said you can't take a, a piece of new cloth, put it on an old garment, because it'll just make it worse. Just trying to patch something up is not good enough. He said, if you try to put new wine into old bottles, they're going to burst. He said, if you, if, you, if you give to the dogs what belongs to God, he says, they're going to turn, they're going to attack you. If you throw your pearls to the pigs, they're going to trample on the pearls, and they're going to turn, and they're going to attack you. He says, we must be made pure, and we must maintain our purity, who shall ascend the heel of the Lord but he that has clean hands and a pure heart, a pure heart. Is your heart pure today? First Timothy 5, 22, keep thyself pure. It's not somebody else's responsibility, it's your responsibility. Ah, oh, you can't count on somebody else to keep you pure. He said, keep yourself pure. And then Matthew 5 and 8, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall See, God, I want to see him, don't you? I want to see him. Pure love will always seek out the highest. I love the song by the cathedrals. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Oh, how we need him to search us out for all those impurities to cause them to come to the surface. Don't get angry with the preacher. Don't get angry and say, oh, that's just the old time way. That's just the old fashioned way. You ask the Holy Ghost. He'll convict you. He'll open your eyes. He'll help you to see, oh, I want to be more like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus lived. Are you living like Jesus lived? Would he live the way that you're living? It's something to think about. I want to live like Jesus Christ. Whenever the silver and gold is refined by fire, all these impurities 
come to the surface. God has a plan to purify us. He wants to purge us and purify us. For Thessalonians 4, 7, for God have not called us to uncleanness, but he's called us to holiness. In 2 Corinthians 7, 1, therefore since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. You see, there's a lot of people that think they're just gonna get by by hoping and wishing. They think, well, I'll get there because mom and dad's going. I've gone to church, I've done a few good things and they think that's gonna get them there. No, you've gotta be washed in the blood of the lamb. You've gotta be purged and purified by the fire of God. He's a Holy Ghost baptizer. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's fire that goes along with this experience. And that fire keeps us purged. That fire keeps us pure. That fire keeps us clean. Because he's coming back for our pride without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. Are you ready for the Lord should he come? Would you stand all over the building? How the heads are bowed, the eyes are closed, the saints are praying. I want to ask you today, do you have pure love? Is your love pure for him? His love is pure for you. He loved us while we were yet sinners. He loves us when we're right. He loves us when we're wrong, when we're weak, when we're strong, but he loves us. He wants us to have pure love for him, pure devotion for him, pure worship for him, not divided, not double-minded, not tainted, not contaminated, but to be holy, and only he can make us holy. Father, we thank you for your precious word. Thank you for reminding us again today, Lord, that you are a holy God and that your love for us is unconditional. You loved us, dear God, while we were yet sinners and died for us. You loved us, God, when we've been wrong. You've loved us when we've been weak. You've loved us, God, when we failed. Your love is unconditional, and we thank you for that love. And oh God, you've called us to love you. You've given us that commandment to love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all of our strength, with everything that's in us to love you. And I pray today, God, that somebody here will make that commitment to be Christ-like. Oh, to be like Jesus, to reflect, to have his reflection shine forth in my life. Let somebody know that I've spent time with you, that I've been in your presence. Oh, the saints of God are praying. Let me ask you today, is there anybody here who say, Pastor, I need to pray and submit myself to the refiner. I need to submit myself to the fire. I'm going to come today and I'm going to allow him to turn up the heat to bring to surface anything that's impure, unacceptable, anything that's tainted, anything that's polluted, anything that's crept into my life, into my heart, that he can skim it away, that he can remove it. The wind will blow and the Spirit of God will move and he will make me a vessel of honor. Would you come this morning, man, woman, young person, and say, Lord, here I am. I'm ready to surrender to you, to exalt you with all my heart, to worship you with all that's in me. Would you come this morning, make that commitment, fall in love with Jesus, fall in love with him with all your heart. Don't hold back anything. Don't try to be a weekend Christian. Don't try to be a part-time Christian. You can't do it. It's all or nothing. Come to him with everything that's in you. Say, here I am, God. I commit myself. I surrender. I yield myself to you. Let him know you love him today. Would you come? Man, woman, young person, come home quickly. Here I am, Lord. Surrendering to you. Bowing before you, yielding to you. Would you come? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord for loving me when I've been wrong, for loving me when I've been weak, loving me, oh God, in spite of my failures. You've loved me through it all. No greater love than that someone would lay down his life for his friends as you have done. You love us. You've proven your love to us over and over again. And today, Lord, I want to commit my love to you, my devotion to you. Would you come with their others quickly, hurriedly? Come on today. Come on. 
surrender because he's going to turn up the heat. He's going to turn up the flame. Whatever's impure is going to start coming to the surface. It's going to be a real battle for you. It's going to be a real fight for you to resist the fire. Submit to the fire until his reflection is shown in your life. Submit to him until he makes you more like him. That others will take notice of you and they'll say, oh, there's just something different. I can tell a difference in you. You've been with Jesus and he's rubbed off on you. You've been with Jesus and he's shining through you. Would you come? How many of you all over the building would like to come and just express your devotion to him and your love to him? Let him know today you do love him with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. No, oh, when you really mean that, when you say it and you mean it, you're going to feel his love coming back to you. He loves it when you love him and praise him. Hallelujah. Let him touch you.
Amen, amen, amen. 